Life is one day at a time dot com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock. Welcome to Life is One Day at a Time dot com. I'm Minister Chestnut. Thank you for joining me again on another day of life and another day of love to live in his riches and glory. Praise God. I'm praying consistently for you that you prosper in mind, body, and soul, domestically, socially, and financially. I pray that you're healed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes because by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. And we just thank him for it, Father God. And I pray that you continue in the faith because, hey, when Jesus comes back, I know he's going to find faith on the earth. Last time we were here in the book of Acts, Paul had gave the Jews a good history lesson. Brought them up to speed, told them where it was, what it is, and how it's going to be. And the next Sunday after he told him that, the whole city turned out to hear it again. And the Jews were upset. They were envious because nobody was going to listen to them anymore because they didn't have the real deal. We're talking about Jesus. Now, we pick it up in chapter 14 and we continue to see what happens next. And it came to pass in Iconium that when they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. I mean, the word of God was getting around. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. See, you always got the haters. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. See, they not only were speaking the word of God, but signs and wonders was following. But the multitude of the city was divided, and the part helped with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it. And they wasn't going to pull anything over their, over their head. Uh, the Lord let them know what was going on. And they fled until... Listeria and Derby, the cities of Laconia, and into the region that lieth round and about, and there they preached the gospel. Hey, they kicked the dust off their feet, and they went and preached the word elsewhere. And there sat a certain man at Listeria, impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, and who steadfast beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. And what did he do? He said with a loud voice, this is Paul, Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. They thought Paul was a god. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. And then 
the priests of Jupiter, they had a priest of Jupiter. They was worshiping the stars, which was before their city brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities into the, living, into the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that were in therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons fulfilling our hearts with food and gladness and with these sayings sacrifice restrain they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them they had to cut the sacrifices out Jesus was the one sacrifice that we needed and all time and all eternity. And after that, no more sacrificing of oxen and sheep and bulls and all that stuff. Jesus was our sacrifice. And there came hither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing that he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, praying, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and taught many, they returned again to Listoria and to Iconium and to Antioch. You can't keep a good man down. They thought they had stoned Paul. But hey, he got up after the, the other apostles prayed for him. He got up and, <laughs> and came back into the city and preached some more. Say he was doing it. Say Paul was confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. I mean, we're saved we're from grace. We're, we're, we're saved by grace and a, but there's going to be tribulations. You have to know that this is a war. That's why we have to put on our whole arm of God, our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our loins girded in truth, our feet shod with the gospel of peace, preparation of peace. We have his word, which is sharper than any two of the sword. But most of all, his shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You have to be prepared each and every day. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord and whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Presidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia, and thence they sailed to Antioch. Hence, when they had recommended to the grace of God to the work from which they fulfilled, and when they were come out, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. I mean, they really broke the word down to them. All the miracles and the things that had happened, they let everybody know because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Chapter 15, and certain men which came down from Judea 
taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dispensation and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go to Jerusalem until the apostles and elders about this question. You always got haters who are going to make it harder for other people and God looks at the heart. It's the circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. See, the word was being shared to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles is anybody other than a Jew. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needed to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. See, the Pharisees, they didn't believe in the, in the afterlife, but some of them believed. But then they want to add to, you know, the law of Moses. Hey, the law was fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled the law. And the apostles and the elders came together to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, You know how that a good while ago God made choice among us and the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit even as he did unto us. See, when you believe, you should receive the Holy Spirit too. It's a gift. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as them. Hey. It's all a matter of faith. And then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after that, they held their peace. And James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which falleth down, and I will build again the rites within I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and of the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, whom declared all these things. Now, that was a mouthful. And, and hey, he said, let it be known unto God all, all his works from the beginning of the world, wherein my sentence is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they are abstained from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time in every city of them that preached unto him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. I mean, this was being read every Sabbath day in the synagogue. So he said, 
let's not put a yoke on the Gentiles. They are circumcised by heart, not of the flesh. And I'm out of time. Let's pick this up next week as we continue with Paul and Barnabas and see what happens next. One day at a time.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock.